things. I wrote in these years to get on to the next book mm -hmm. a series of articles and all kinds of things, including four on the Great Depression. Because I was working on the Great Depression all this time, and I wrote four articles in the Great Depression. And um, I wrote articles on other things. I wrote articles in history. I wrote articles on jazz and other forms of music. Uh, some of these articles were also like, I, I had that very nice article, which is still my first article in the black, out, out of which black culture comes, uh, um, black uh, slave songs and slave consciousness, which is itself a very nice piece. If you just want the method without the 400 pages, that's not a bad place to get it. And, and uh, so I had all these articles and I, um, I began to worry, as people do, that no one was reading them because a lot of them were published in journals which were not so well known and collections which are gone and no one reads them anymore and no one ever read them very much. So I approached Oxford University Press and Cornell approached me. So I had, uh, Oxford was interested and Cornell was interested and I ultimately published a book called the, the Unpredictable Past, which is a book of essays that stretch from uh, my very earliest work on uh, thinking about my life and history um, to right through the 70s and 80s. Uh, and the book was published in 1993. And I think the last article might have been as late as 1990, I forget. So um, it's, a, it's a good spectrum of my work. And it shows how cultural I was becoming and how cultural I really had been even from the beginning. When you did that book and drew together articles that you'd written, some of them in the distant past, did, did you become a revisionist in any way? Did you look at anything and say, I would do that differently? If I well, if you, if you had a paper bag, I'd put it on now and say, <laughs> I kind of like my work. Uh, it, it was it was uh, the work of a quarter of a century, mm -hmm. and um, if you had said you can go back and rewrite things, I, I you know I would have said why. Uh, it never okay for for the time. It is true. I wouldn't have done everything the way I did. After all, I knew a lot more in 1993 than I did when the book was published, or 92 when it was, went into the press, uh, than I did when I wrote the book. But I, I thought they were interesting articles. I have something in there that's very old, a comparison of the 20s and the 30s. And, and oh, no, it's a, no, it isn't. It's a book about the 20s. And it's a book about nostalgia and progress, the two forces. And I tried to talk about how Americans look the back. Article. I mean the article. How Americans look back and forward at the same time. Uh, uh, and I use the 20s as an example. That's probably one of the oldest things I've ever done. It, it comes out of a lecture I gave. That's what's interesting to me. This comes out of a lecture I was giving to my students here at Berkeley in the 60s, in the early 60s. And it's a very cultural piece. I mean, it's a, a piece by a cultural historian, though I didn't think of myself right. as a cultural historian. Yeah. You, as you approach your teaching, your it instincts towards the cultural historian. The title of the book is interesting, too. The, the Unpredictable Pets mm -hmm. comes from a joke I read. A Soviet joke. This was after all the Soviet Union of the past, and it said, "The future is certain. It's only the past that's unpredictable." And because, of course, the Soviet Union was constantly changing its history books and the like. But if you, one goes beyond that totalitarian state to talk about the whole process of history, it is true that the past is unpredictable. It's unpredictable for lots of reasons. It's unpredictable because it's seen from the present. It's unpredictable because our needs change. I mean, our needs have something to do with this thing. It's unpredictable because our tools change, our, uh, our, our weapons of understanding change, of, we supposedly progress. So the way I see history <clears throat> is that it moves in circles. And what I hope is true is that the circles, however, progress. So you don't just start here and then keep progressing and then you're right back where you started. You may be right back to a political orientation rather than a cultural or economic orientation, but hopefully the political orientation is a little more deeply rooted in human nature and what we know of human nature, et cetera, et cetera. So well, I wrote. You do look at different things. I, I, well, you do. For, for instance, gender issues. Absolutely. Know, kind of ignored. Absolutely. I, I had no sense of them when I began writing at all. And, uh, no, it's true, and there would be some people who would say I still don't, but I hope not. Um, so that was a good experience.